Before I continue with my CNC project, I want to say a quick thank you to James L. for donating some money via Patreon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I have been very upset by YouTube's actions. I feel like what they did was, was heartless and dishonest in offering people money then saying we're not going to give it to you. And I am on a fixed income. Uh, and I made uh, decisions based off of what they said they were going to do. I bought these uh, these two six terabyte hard drives and those lights there just for the YouTube channel so I could create content and share it with you. I never thought I would get rich doing this, but I was hoping that I would make enough money at it so I can continue. And this makes it hard because um, it kind of takes the you out of YouTube and the idea that you could have this linear progression and uh, not every YouTube channel could be as popular as Maru the Cat. I think Maru probably makes a thousand dollars a week for its um, caretakers. and. Um, but um, I'm, and I'm sure that there's some, and I'm sure there's some, some things that Maru the cat can teach us. And I'd like to meet Maru the cat. I'm, I'm kind of a cat person. At the same time, there's, I feel like I wanted to share something, and I wanted to share my experience. I don't usually speak highly of myself, but I was actually uh, an auto fabricator's assistant, and I have a little, a little bit of electronics, a little bit of pro pro programming, not a lot, but. Um, but the, um, what I thought and I wanted to bring um, to, and give to you is that um, I kind of bring together a, a couple of different skills. And, um, and uh, like I said, I am on a fixed income. So I, I have this emphasis of trying to make do of what, what I have available. And I was hoping to incite you, my viewers, to look around your house or wherever and see what you can do with what you have. I'm getting ready to mount the ball screw, which has been a little challenging because um, um, this plate is not symmetrical. Um, neither is this. And um, I don't have a, a milling machine to uh, be able to bore a new one of these. And um, so what I'm going to do right now is use this one and drill it out and put some more ugly holes in this plate. I mean, I'm not making this thing for aesthetics. I just want it to be fairly accurate. The first thing I did was establish a center line on this on the top here, on the top here, and also on the bottom here. And um, then I, uh, I found the height of, of the center line of the ball screw and matched it up on this end here. And then I drew, I scribed the line on the back of this where you can't see. And also a, a center line rising up from the center line of the ball screw going vertically like this. And from that, I was able to line this up, and I used a little little baby square to, uh, oh, they're awfully cute, um, to um, make sure that this is uh, square as best I could. And uh, then I clamped it into place. And uh, I had a little issue where when I drew the plans, one thing I should have drawn was this bearing here because um, this needs to be set in a little bit on each end so it can have a little adjustment this way. And um, the thing that makes this really hard is that um, I needed to establish where the ball screw was going to be before I tighten this clamp, hold pinning this block here up to the top. And the reason why I needed to do that is I didn't want this to be under, uh, under tension. And well, right now nothing is drilled or anything, but... Um, I didn't want, I wanted to have, you know, a few millimeters of adjustment um, so I can move this around, the block around, you know, uh, you know, kind of this way on this plane. And uh, likewise, I want this to have a couple millimeters that I can adjust it like this on this plane. The issue is that um, I couldn't mark the, the location for this block here until I made sure that the screw was pretty much tension free. I mean, it's going to bend a little bit under its own weight because you can you can bend this, you know, and um, and actually that's probably for the best because otherwise it would bind hopelessly. And likewise, if you ran it close to either end, it would bind hopelessly. Um, on the top here, you can see the silly light thing that I might throw somewhere on this thing. Who knows? I think it'd be fun. Um, anyway, I've uh, measured also on this side and um, scribed a line down the center on top of the symmetric marker. This is the bearing mount in case you didn't get a good look at it. As you can see, we're at the bottom looking up and uh, this, is the, this is the ball screw. This is the ball screw mount. The bearings are in here. This is the end of the, um, 
the ball screw where the where the motor coupler would mount. I knew I was going to be able to get this thing like this, but um, as you can see, my holes are a little bit off. But I had anticipated that. That's why I set this up, and um, so I got it as best I could. And I'm going to take a transfer punch, and this is what a transfer punch looks like. This is much bigger than what I'm going to use. I'm going to take a smaller transfer punch and put it in this hole like this, avoiding hitting the camera, and give it a, a good wrap. And I'll repeat that for the rest of them. I'm in the process of drilling the holes for the ball screw bracket. I was looking at too many lines and accidentally uh, marked the wrong uh, intersect line intersection and uh, you can see these holes are going to be pretty close to these holes probably even inter encroach on these uh, counter bores but uh, there's nothing I could do about that and I don't think it'll make that much difference. This is a small part I better clamp it and be careful. This is the inside of that, um, the other end. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's the vertical line and there's a the horizontal line. I kept it proud just a little bit above, um, just enough so I can see it. Um, hypothetically, this has a radius on this edge and it's um, probably, um, probably just equal with it. I could scribe a line going across this way, half of the, uh, thickness and then scribe down, measure and scribe down, but um, that wouldn't have taken account the inaccuracy of, of how I likely drilled these holes and um, I have to accept, and it's hard, that um, that uh, this machine is not going to have interchangeable pieces and the harder thing to accept is that I screwed that up like that and um, hopefully I make that look a little bit better and make sure I've got uh, this going the right way, it's on the inside as soon as I hit this, it's probably going to want to move, but... Let's see uh, when I get them drilled and tapped, it'll be more apparent how close they are or not. I loosened up the fasteners for the uh, column of this drill press, and uh, I turned it and then swung this largely out of the way. And um, then I put the plate edgewise, and you can see it's still a little wobbly, but uh, it won't fit underneath the ba base. So what I did is uh, clamp this little block of metal the side of it. Okay, it's not really little, but still, you get my idea. And I'm going to give this a shot drilling it. I've got to empty out the chips a lot while I'm drilling this hole because I need it to be a deep hole. Um, and uh, I'm hoping not to break the bit, but I'm going to give it my best shot. That's the pilot hole. A little flag on there. You have to be careful not to move the flag, though. I've got this plate mounted again. The holes are uh, drilled. I'm gonna. I have a countersink. I'm just gonna give them just a little touch, like so. I don't often do this, but I'm worried about tapping out these holes. And I've got uh, a six millimeter tap. And, uh, plenty of oil. I've got a cup of coffee over here to, uh, and I'm just going to take my time and do this. I've got a com comfortable chair. I have something to fix some of the chips. 
I've got a rag over the end of the ball screw so all the chips don't fall into the uh, bearings. And um, yeah, so I'm fairly comfortable. I got the camera out of the way. And here we go. Now I'll try to get it straight. I'll back off after a while, but I like to get a couple of threads started before I do it, like so. I have a file card, and it seems to clean this even better than the other. Maybe because it's not all contaminated, but it's pretty stiff. Well, I'm happy that this seems to be uh, fairly decent. Um, I only have two bolts here, and um, I don't know, hypothetically, I could add a third, but I don't know if it's going to be a big issue until I put on the rest of the gantry and... Uh, you see how um, you know how straight this uh, uh, brow screw is. Um, so this has to be trimmed at the top. That's going to be with the next thing I do. I've unbolted the uh, mount from the uh, motor side, and uh, I've taken the ball screw off and flipped it upside down, mounted on top of the machine, and. Uh, so I have to cut this and inside here there's bearings and um, there's a weird retaining nut and um, I was looking at this this morning and I said to myself well I can make a tool to uh, to take this nut off but it's going to take me longer to make the tool than it would be to cut this even with a hacksaw which I might use or I might use a, um, a sawzall you know kind of saw and um, so um so i took and taped this off to keep any uh and i kept to make the tape so the chips flow away from this but uh um i still think that you know the cleanup is going to have to be done carefully and i went around the perimeter with a marker and what i need to do is cut off at least eight millimeters off the top so that the uh, this is the way it would be in the machine the gantry will go over here, or actually, it'll go, you know, the gantry will go underneath the, the uh, ball nut. I'm going to mark it. I'm just going to scribe it with a, with a caliper. I don't like doing this, but I don't have enough of a surface to do it well. Um, and it, this, isn't, this isn't the highest, uh, you know, precision. This has got to be about, about uh, 8 or 10 millimeters. I'm going to take 10 off. I think I can get 10. I'm going to try this uh, Harbor Freight electric hacksaw. Interesting thing is that this saw, you, you can hear this, that's not thrust, that's uh, side to side play. And I've always kept this thing oiled, the uh, bushings are already bad in this, and this saw uh, probably has uh, probably, uh, probably less than 20 hours of use, and I usually put oil right in here to uh, keep the bushings fresh, but I guess that even that wasn't enough. I mean, getting it started is the hard part. Like half size. I already have a problem seeing the line. As you can see. Unfortunately, it skipped off. I that's why I don't like about power hacksaws. The end hacksaws are so they're so hard to start. So I got a little nick there, so I have to live with that. Uh, the cut is well fair, but at least that uh, it, I didn't go too deep. And I but I got some material to move here. And uh, I know most of this is just for aesthetics, but uh, you know I don't want to leave this like this. I've got a drill with a little grinding disc. I'm going to try this on this on these corners. So I found out from woodworking that uh, the problem with filing this is that you can't usually push enough to dig these teeth in, but this is a rounded file. So what I'm going to do, oddly, to get this started is I'm going to try using the rounded side in the, with the idea that you can push it hard enough into the metal to cut it. Let's see how this works. And I'm kind of using a semi-draw filing, and it is cutting. taking off the high so this is a file card 
It's getting there. I'm going to do a little draw filing too. You can see this is still low. I probably even got a little bit below the line, but I'm just doing this for aesthetics and kind of the fun, for the fun of it. And uh, you can see I'm doing, making a lot of crisscrossing uh, patches. That way, uh, when, the, when the teeth cut, it'll give you a guide to where, um, where the high spots are. Here's no longer the deepest scratch. It's this one from galling. These two are from galling from not cleaning the file. And sometimes a, a curl of metal will go under and kind of cut into itself. And so just for ha-ha's, I covered this up with marker. And um, I'm going to take the uh, medium fine file and uh, let's see how bad this is. This should be interesting. You can see I turned the edges. I have a pretty fine file here, which is probably too fine for, fine for this right now. I guess the cool thing about draw filing is you don't get the, this galling here because it doesn't break off chips in the same way. I think the curls of metal are more consistent. Every time that happens, it galls. Which doesn't seem to happen with uh, when you draw a file. But the problem is if I just keep on draw filing, then the edges will be high. Steel doesn't do this. It doesn't gall like this. I could probably put some oil on this, but it'd make a big mess. Oddly, oil works good. I'm waiting to take off the tape because there's metal particles trapped in these sockets and then the bolts, as you can see. So I still have a little nick on the corner. It came out okay for something I won't be able to see, and that's how it looked when it was sawn. You can see the little mark I put in with the saw. I think that if I, I like to get a piece of uh, angle iron um, for starting cuts like that. I think that would have protected it. I've had so many problems, with it, especially with the sawzall, because the, the, the bushings in the blade are very loose, especially my saw. And uh, even with a hacksaw, this is easy to do. That's why... Uh, my shop teacher had said that uh, he has more injuries um, with uh, hacksaws than any other tool. Anyway, the uh, this is a little stainless steel part, a uh, little dust cap for the bearing on this side, and it hangs down, and I uh, blackened it with some marker. I'm just going to describe a line on it. So I've got uh, the other bearing mount just clamped down to this. I've got a little rag to keep the chips from going in the drawer. Uh, my bench is has another project on it right now, and uh, for this, I'm going to use this uh, electric bandsaw, which uh, unfortunately doesn't have a cover. And I don't recommend anyone using one of these without a cover. And I'm going to be very careful with it and treat it with the utmost fear and respect. Uh, I like these because they make they make a nice cut. Uh, what I the thing that makes it challenging is the thing is a little bit bigger than the. Uh, than the uh, Sawzall kind of compatible saw, and um, I didn't think I could get this in. The other thing is they like to have uh, this this little bracket pushed against a workpiece, which I don't think I could have done because uh, I couldn't, I didn't, was unwilling to uh, to take the bracket off of the other one. So let's give this a go. And once again, I have to be careful and keep out of harm's way. Uh, It's heavy. It's a lot nicer than using the sawzall, that's for sure. And it does a pretty fairly nice cut. I mean, it's within a half a millimeter, whereas the other one's only within a millimeter, even when it's running good. I'm going to send the part in the disc sander, trying to move it around. I got a little bowl of water here to cool it down. Because this is going to be uh, moved up and down, and and uh, it might be proud or below the surface. I'm going to round the corners a little bit. 
I still have to uh, trim the end of this. I'm just going to feed this into the belt sander. I have to be careful because my purchase on it is not all that great. This is really tight. Uh, fortunately, this is stainless steel and uh, it's probably almost as hard as these jaws. So I'm not worried about it marring so I could put a lot of pressure on it. I'm using uh, polycarbonate uh, safety glasses and you have to be careful that uh, this guard can move and it can be pulled in like this. You always have to be careful of that. So this is the piece of the metal I'm going to make most of the rest of the parts of the machine from. This is um, 6061. Apparently this was a tooling plate and it's um, it's uh, it's been annealed to, uh, let's see, it says uh, a T651 state. I've heard of T4, but uh, so I don't know what a T651 state was, but I, this was probably a pretty spiffy piece of aluminum in its day. And um, so the parts I've laid out, I've got stuff going up into here. I got stuff going up down into here. So I, I have like, I'm gonna have very little waste left over when I get done. And uh, so I've, as a matter of fact, I've got to make this cut here up into here. I'm gonna probably take the circular saw across up into here and finish this up with this. And because I can't cut this tang off. And uh, so this is gonna be interesting. So I've already tried um, cutting a little bit, and it seems like it's going to go okay. But before I do, there's a little bearing here on the saw. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to give this, treat this with a little bit of oil here and let that soak in for a minute and put a little bit on the blade too. It might cause the, uh, it might cause things to stick a little bit also right there. Uh, put a little oil right here. You know, just to keep it happy. You know, I don't think this will, I think this will last better than the harder freight saw, but uh, I figure less friction, the longer battery life will have. Skipping ahead, the, uh, the cut didn't come up bad. I got a little here overzealous, and I, I cut right on the line. I probably gnawed into it a little bit, but this is a non-critical edge because I just need this for a reference to drill the holes. And so, so on the other on the other parts, I have to remember not to not to uh, do that where, where they actually uh, really butt so uh, up against one another. And uh, so now I've got to decide how I'm going to cut this. I'm probably going to cut it with a circular saw and then use the, uh, the, uh, the uh, saber saw for the last little bit. The battery is out, out of the saw and you could see where my line is and I'm checking a tooth. I've got the saw tied up pretty tight against the fence but not too much force. I'm going to carefully turn the uh, blade and I'm going to try another tooth. Make sure that's good, and yet one more tooth. Like so. I use this big uh, caliper, kind of as, as a depth thing, to uh, measure this accurately on both sides. So I set up, I set it up with a couple of teeth on this side, and then transferred the measurement over here, and got this about the same place. And uh, you know you can only do so much. Uh, this will probably bend a little bit, but uh, it seems okay. I want to be careful that this is actually a part for a big 3D printer. I've got the depth of the saw um, set so it's not too deep. I'm wearing hearing protection, eye protection. You should not do this, period. Um, these saws are not made for cutting aluminum. Um, there's always a chance that something can go wrong, like you could throw a chip. As I said before, if you do anything like this, you're do definitely doing it at your own risk. And uh, uh, don't work distracted, don't work intoxicated, and uh, yeah, I've been using tools for most of my life, including power tools, and, uh, and I still get nervous doing this, and you should too. I've changed the battery, nothing on this saw feels warm. I swapped the batteries, the saw feels cool still. And I gotta keep an eye on this to make sure I'm not going over. Yeah. 
I have both edges clamped and I'm just going to complete the cut. Checking the length of the plate, I printed out some templates. I taped them down with masking tape or painter's tape, as it were. Um, you've seen me drill and lay out holes before. These are the locations for the um, linear rail, and these are five millimeter screws, which look like that. There's not too many five millimeter screws kicking around here. Anyway, um, for both the five millimeter and the, the rest that builds the structure, you can see I um, I picked a drill bit that has got a little bit of an overbore, so. Uh, so there's a little bit of play adjustment here. And once again, um, the, I guess the point I'm trying to drive home is that, uh, that uh, you, know, I, you know, building something out of imprecise things, it's basically, we have, we have to pretty much make it adjustable, you know. It's like, I don't have high precision machines to make this out of. And so I need a little adjustment here and there. In the case of these, of these are off just a little bit angular. Then um, this builds up quite a quite a lot over the distance of over a meter or about over three feet, and uh, so that little bit of uh, difference isn't that much uh, in, in in perspective. At the same time, you don't want your washers to pull through, and you have to make sure that you can provide enough of clamping pressure to hold the thing together in a machine that's vibrating. And so lock washers and lock tight will be necessary. To so I'm trying to make sure that there's no gap here. So I'm just adjusting the, uh, the little jack I made so it's sits so pretty level. <laughs> Sometimes it helps, given the, how this these checks are made. Sometimes it helps if you do if you tighten it more than one place. This I don't think this is a ball bearing chucks. A little oil to keep the chips from sticking. This drill is just for the linear way mounts. This is the final size that'll be used for the uh, the six millimeter bolts that'll be used for assembling this. Uh, the five millimeters are a little bit smaller. Uh, this aluminum drill is really nice in that it doesn't have tough spots and um, and soft spots, and it's very homogeneous. It's nice aluminum, but the chips it makes tend not to break. It's it's uh, it's it has good tensile strength. It's tough, and uh, so this this comes off of here like this and. Um, uh, the other 6061 aluminum I've drilled uh, hasn't done acted like this, and uh, this I guess because of its annealed state um, um, is I don't just seems to hold together better. Um, so that has its good points and its bad points. With the holes in this workpiece drilled, I'm going to countersink all the holes. Um, often I'll take on larger holes. Often I'll take a file and run it once lightly over the surface just to make sure that nothing is proud, because um, even the countersink can leave our, our ridge sometimes. Um, I'm not doing this for aesthetics or even the ease of assembly. I just want this stuff to sit flat. When I use a countersink, and these usually have an even number of flues, so once they start chattering, they keep on chattering. Um, this is actually a marker, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so, uh, so when I use the countersink, I usually use firm pressure for a short duration. These are both Allen cap screws. This one's five millimeters. This will be used for the um, uh, linear way. This will be used for assembly. This is six millimeters. And you can see with the washer, if I slide this, I have just a little bit of play. And I'm hoping that'll be enough to overcome my inaccuracies of both. And when I assemble this, I'm gonna probably uh, use a transfer punch to, to, as the final marking place. We're looking underneath the machine. You can see the plate's kind of dirty. I guess I gotta clean this up at some point, um, but uh, that's just a, for aesthetics. Um, this is the uh, aluminum extrusion. This is the, um, the linear rail. Um, 
and uh, this is the bearing, one of the two bearing blocks with a little Zerk uh, grease fitting on here. This is attached with 5 millimeter screws, lock washers and washers. These washers are a little bit wimpier than I thought they would be, but they'll have to do. And uh, as you can see, it slides like this. And uh, I put some grease on here. This is just uh, polyurea uh, grease. And yes, actually, that's what it's called uh, chemically. You can see this thing right here is just a piece of bed frame that I found. Um, it's attached to the cart. And uh, I'm going to need another piece because it's got a little bow in it, and I'll just clamp two of them together. It's actually put up in tension. I got the rest of the bolts in, and I decided to use grade eight bolts not only because of their tension, because I don't, you know, I like a lot, a lot of tension on these bolts to, because we're only, only using clamping uh, pressure, the deformation of the material, and friction to hold this machine into alignment. But uh, I want to be able to adjust this without the bolts getting all munched up. And, uh, and, and and also the bolts harder and not deforming underneath the wrench. You have, I feel you have a better uh, feel on the torque. Anyway, I've got two. Uh, I have two washers on this side. There's nothing under here, so I had to go in and put two washers. This is what happens when you use reused material. Likewise, um, I don't like all these extra holes and stuff, but they're not going to change the functioning of the machine. Um, I have two pieces of uh, angle iron salvage from bed frames, and I put it under so the, so the top rib is underneath tension. But I still need a little more strength, so I'm going to find another another pair. It only took me like two weeks to find um, this after I decided I needed it, and uh, I think I'm going to likely find some more for some reason. Um, right now I only have wooden blocks holding up the machine. I have some cheap hockey pucks. I'm going to use those with vibration isolation and put some threaded rods so I can level out the machine. Um, it is on a cart and I, wa I did want it um, isolated from the ground. I know the wheels have some isolation but uh, you know I have neighbors. Um, I've got the ball screw mounted on both ends. It's not mounted to the to the um, bottom plate of the gantry yet. Um, I've got the, this in this video. You saw I, I trimmed this. I also trimmed this little plate in here. I got a little overzealous, but that's okay. So I'm happy the ball screw is working good. Um, this is working pretty good, even though I haven't really really line this thing up yet and I'm going to put some little marks in the corners to uh, so I can do some diagonal measurements to try to get it square but um, um, as far as I know the uh, uh, the rails don't care if it's square as long as it's parallel and um, the thing that cares if it's square is the um, ball screw because there's bearings on either end that count on this being perpendicular like that the first diagonal view of the uh, the way 